Hi. My intention is to have videos that are sometimes philosophical, ideological, theoretical, but at the same time I want to keep our feet on the ground and have some educational, hands-on videos where we talk about practical stuff. I also made the point that architects need to develop their scientific muscle if they want to offer something of value, something that other professions do not deal with. The understanding of computer graphics is I think one of those spheres where it is highly beneficial for you to know how it works and it is a part of building industry that I think should be mastered by architects first and foremost. Your main design tool is inside your cranium and I can't help you much in understanding that one. But as an architect, you need to understand your second main design tool, which is a CAD program today, in order to materialize those wild ideas that you have. Now, theory without practice will not get you far in architecture, usually. There are folks out there that are all talk and they don't do much themselves. Visionaries that have employees or students that do the work for them. But that is not our concern. Sometimes they're celebrated, sometimes they get rich and famous, life is not fair, who cares? You just have to recognize in your life who can help you grow, who give you something of real palpable value, some real fuel for progress, because you don't want to waste your precious time. In my teaching practice, I often encountered some misunderstanding about how 3D geometry in any CAD program is created and represented. If you don't know the basics of computer graphics, that can stop you from modeling the shapes you imagined. You need to know your tools if you want to reach your goal. One of the things that confuses people often is the difference between mesh geometry and NURBS geometry, and when to use what. So in the next couple of minutes I will do my best to explain the basic differences, and how are both of them used. Most geometry in computer graphics starts with a simple 3D point. Three coordinates in a Euclidean space, X, Y and Z. From a simple point you can go to a line and then to a polyline, create simple polygons, etc. But if you want to represent 3D shapes, surfaces or volumes, you need something additional. That is why polygon meshes were created. Very often when you see some 3D model, you see something that looks like this. That is a polygonal mesh. A mesh has the following information. It has a list of all of its points with their coordinates. Using these points you can define edges and the most important polygons or faces. And edges and faces only tell you at what points to look at. They do not have any additional information. For example, this edge says I start at point 0 and add at point 1. Go look at their coordinates if you want to visualize me. The faces do the same. In a standard mesh representation you either have triangle or quadrangle faces. And that is all. The most important thing to mention is that mesh polygons have an orientation. That is very important for rendering, for example. If you have black faces in your rendering, it's probably because those mesh faces are not oriented properly. And the orientation of faces is simply determined by the order of points. Clockwise and counterclockwise order will give you opposite orientations. Now this is how most of the geometry you see out there is represented. From Toy Story to Game of Thrones, you're looking at huge lists of points of coordinates and faces. There are lots of software out there like ZBrush for example, in which you have a great palette of tools to treat models with millions of polygons like clay and model it into what you need. That is how you get Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean. But those programs are usually not interesting for architects because they do not have a certain precision we require. The point is that however complicated these models look like, at the end of the day when you zoom in you will see simple polygons. They are just simple numeric representations and they achieve complexity through sheer brute force, through numbers. You can subdivide and subdivide and have models with millions and millions of tiny polygons. Well, there were people that didn't like this discrete representation that much. It was too imprecise. They wanted to use some of the mathematical knowledge and create very precise curves and surfaces. This was of great importance for industrial designers where there are lots of freeform curves and surfaces and it comes as no surprise that two pioneers in the development that led to NURB surfaces worked in the car industry. Pierre Bézier worked for Renault in France and Paul de Castelló, I'm probably pronouncing that very very wrong and I apologize, worked for Citroën. Now how did NURBS develop? This is a mathematically very long story and I do plan to make some videos on it and explain the basic NURBS mathematics so that you know how to properly design freeform surfaces. But let me just try to make a form of a teaser here. In mathematics you usually try to describe geometrical shapes with functions so that you have a simple formula in which you can substitute values or parameters and then generate the entire shape. So the simplest possible example is a line. If we have a point P0 with X, Y, Z coordinates, let's say with values 1, 1, 1, and then an imaginary point P1, 
with coordinates 2, 2, 2. We can imagine a line between the point P0 and the point P0 plus P1, which will have coordinates 3, 3, 3. So if you're wondering, if you add two points or add two vectors, all that you need to do is simply adding all of their coordinates separately. So if we add P0 and P1, we will get 3, 3, 3. Now we can introduce a simple formula for our line with a single parameter u. If we substitute u with 0, we will get the starting point. If we substitute u with 1, we will get the end point. Now you can substitute u with any value between 0 and 1 and you will be able to generate an infinite amount of points on the line. Thus you have a robust formula that perfectly describes a line between two points, a continuous representation in contrast to a discrete one. What can you do now? If you simply expand this formula a little bit, you have a parabolic arc. Now you slide your u values from 0 to 1 and they will draw a parabolic arc. Now this is where the story of NURBS starts. This is just an introduction and we will go into detail some other time. But if you stand on the fast track of the NURBS development, you will observe how people played with mathematical formulas in order to enable us to define more and more complex shapes. You will slowly pass by Bezier curves, developed by the aforementioned Paul Bezier, polynomials that work with a polygon of points, then you will see them expand into something called rational Bezier curves, then you will witness the development of B splines with uniform and non-uniform knot vectors, B splines will also become rational, and eventually you will expand this one-dimensional story to two dimensions and create surfaces instead of curves, known as non-uniform rational beast line surfaces or NURBS as they are known around the village. So remember how a mesh basically only has point coordinates and then everything else, edges, faces, just points to those points? Well NURBS surfaces or curves also work with a network of points, but they use them as an input into those huge polynomials that you can use to precisely calculate the position of any point on the surface or on the curve. Remember how at the beginning we had that line and by you changing a u parameter you can generate any point on that line? Well with NURBS you also have the u parameter when it comes to curves and you have u and v parameter when it comes to surfaces. So all NURBS surfaces basically have these two directions. And if you want to create something more complicated you have to combine them into poly surfaces, use plugins like this spline but that is another branch we will explore later. So if you have a mesh, if you pull one of its vertices you're pulling the edges and faces affected with it. And that's it. Very simple and crude. If you pull one of the control points of a NURB surface, you create this smooth effect that depends on many other variables, like the degree of the surface, weight of the control points, uniformity of the knot vector, etc. It is in a sense more sophisticated and more precise way of designing, which was essential for industrial designers in the history, but it becomes more and more essential in the modern freeform architecture. Almost all of the projects I worked on were modeled using NURBS. If you have a mesh landscape and you make an intersection, you will end up with a polygonal line. If you intersect a NURBS surface, you will get a perfectly smooth curve. And since mathematical definition is continuous, or infinite in precision, your precision will be determined only by your tolerance settings in your CAD program, and not by the size of the mesh faces. On the NURBS surface, you can compute a derivative at a certain point, calculate the Gaussian curvature, principal curvature, and all other interesting stuff that might be useful for you. You can also easily transform NURBS surface to a mesh. There are algorithms that simply discretize your surface and create a polygonal mesh. Converting mesh to NURBS is a very different story. It's a reverse engineering problem and can be very difficult. So if you select mesh in Rhino and use mesh to NURBS command, it will just turn every single mesh face into a NURBS surface and connect it into a huge poly surface. This is almost never useful, but as I said, we will address this in the future. We will also talk about what file types to use to export and import NURBS geometry and what file types to exchange meshes. But let me make a final point now. If you're modeling a standard rectangular orthogonal architecture, you're probably already working in BIM programs like Revit or Archicad, Vectorworks, etc. And you're using meshes. However, if you want to get out of the straight line business and start designing smooth curves and surfaces, then I definitely recommend NURBS and software like Rhino. I would leave polygonal mesh modeling like ZBrush to the video game industry and Hollywood for now. Most of you already probably knew a lot of what I said, but now maybe you have a little bit of additional knowledge that will help you in your daily practice. I personally use NURBS Geometry and Rhino for orthogonal geometry as well, for all my modeling. 
because as I mentioned, you can easily go from NURBS to MeSH, but other way around is pretty difficult. But sometimes you have no choice, and if you have to move your geometry between software, scale it, transform it, rebuild it, you need to know the mathematics behind it. Consider this video a motivation to explore this further. Subscribe so you can see more videos on this and many other subjects. Share, 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 visit the Patreon page for different types of support, stay free and let's get to work.